recently we reviewed John Wick 4. A great movie, by the way. One of, I think, our favorite movies of the year. It's up there. And so, out of the John Wick cinematic universe, now we've got the Peacock show, The Continental, which is kind of like a prelude to everything that happened in John Wick. Uh, and this is night one with an hour and a half episode. Yes, it was kind of long. It was a movie. It was kind of long. No lie. Yeah, a lot of different characters come into this whole thing, obviously, with it being an hour and a half. Uh, I, I feel like, really, it felt like another John Wick movie, but because they're splitting this thing into three nights, obviously, they didn't get through to the end of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, obviously, there's still a lot of places that we can go with it, uh, but the formula of John Wick movies is here. Mm -hmm. Like uh, A lot of different, very eclectic characters that I feel like are involved, a lot of different paths and ways that we can go. Uh, I, I don't want to already speak negatively, but I feel like in some points, it's a lot. So, like, some of the characters are kind of hard to keep up with a little bit because it's just so much different things that are going on already. My thought is that the plan is... Because you're right, it doesn't, it doesn't feel very structured early on. Mm-hmm. I feel like immediately as they're starting to introduce these characters, I'm trying to think of how they connect to characters that we've already seen in the John Wick universe. Yeah. Like I'm trying to reverse, not reverse engineer, I guess kind of accelerate the engineering into what it eventually is in the, the, the John Wick franchise that we already know. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, right, the, the brother and sister, the black brother and sister mm -hmm. who are running jobs together. Lou and... Yeah, name. I don't know what old girl's name was. They said that you can't remember. But I don't know. Maybe it's too early to to predict. One of them, it probably ended up being Mister Nobody's parent, Who's as that? a result of the other sibling's death or something like that. You know what I would have loved is if the dojo had something to do with. If that's the case, then. You bring him back, Mr. Nobody is hanging out front of like the dojo or something. No, I think he's either because you I think we're like what, Way thirty back. years yeah. prior from the yeah. from the current series. So I mean, adults that we are seeing now aren't even born yet. Or they're they're very, very small. Mm hmm Infants, toddlers. Yeah. So if we see a little black kid pop up out of nowhere, it's I'm possible. thinking Mr. Nobody. I'm also thinking I know who John Wick's parents are. Already? I think I know who John Wick's parents are. Mm. Yeah. And why Winston went to such lengths to kind of protect John Wick through his saga with the table and all that other stuff. I think I know. We'll, we'll continue to watch it and see if my prediction plays out, but I think I know who his parents are. I hope you don't think it's his brother and... I think it's Richie and Yen's son. Really? Yeah. I think Yen is, is John Wick half Vietnamese or whatever. She I is? could see it playing. I could see it playing that way. I think Yen is currently pregnant with Richie's son. That's why they were she's so, so hard her on home. their home and so. Yep, yep, yep. Because she's pregnant. You know what I think would work with that is if that that flower that she took with her is like a metaphor for John Wick. John Wick. Yeah. Soon to come, John Wick. I, I, hey man, I, I think that's what it is. Because that's the one thing she took with her from that place. It could hint to it. I, could, I guess I could see that. That would be crazy. And that would explain Winston's affection. Because not only is that his nephew, but like he lost his brother to the table. Or to the, not to the table. He lost it to the, the, the Continental. Yeah. Um, and, and just that authority, the, the apparatus of the, that industry. Is what he lost his family to. So it makes sense that at any chance that he gets to buck it or go against it, he does. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of upset about how long it took me to realize that bro stole the, the coin printing machine or coin minting machine. I thought it was pretty obvious after he they he let it go and he took it with him. Because yeah. he could have very easily jumped out of the plane and let them go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not like they, they was like checking the seal. Is that the box? Does he have it? <laughs> and it's like no the minute he set up there got in the open they iced him so it's yeah. like he probably definitely well he definitely didn't have it but while it was going on I was like he probably doesn't even have it yeah 
Yeah, no, I'm I'm very excited for one to see what the 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 brother and sister duo end up being or end up doing. I guess by the end of this whole thing, I think that would mm. be very interesting. Uh, of course, they got to make Winston extremely charming and uh, very charismatic. Mm. Uh, but I mean, that's who he becomes in the show. So sure. like, I don't know. Very interesting. Uh, Sharon. Sharon. Mm. Yeah, he shows up in this show. It's kind of funny because I feel like this guy is like a little bit like bigger, and so it's like for him to eventually become tall, that, slender, and bald head. <laughs> it's kind of funny, um, but I, I like how he he is still kind of the same character for the most part. Very stoic. Yep. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't play the front desk. Like he's still like. Uh, it's in more this of case, a personal assistant than he is the concierge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In this case, he's uh, Mel Gibson's character's. Like right hand man basically, mm-hmm. but then eventually he will become both Winston's right hand man and the front desk. So mm-hmm. kind of interested to see how he, I guess, gets relegated to the front desk. But you know, I'm sure all of that will kind of be explained. Mm-hmm. the The whole theme and setting for everything is is pretty cool. How it's you know like the 70s. Yeah. Uh, so it kind of plays pretty well, even though it does kind of seem like some of the things are kind of still modern a little bit. Like it doesn't fully still seem like it's the 70s Some not, not until you see him driving cars or going into public places yeah the guns are throwing me off a little bit maybe that's what it is i think that's what maybe it is the too. guns are throwing me off because they're they're using pistols that feel <clears throat> modern yeah uh, and rocket launchers i don't know enough about guns to to like tell the difference in generations of guns so like it looks pretty modern to me yeah I, I would agree. Anyway. I'm not seeing a whole lot of revolvers and stuff like that is what you I think you would expect to see in, in the 70s, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I kind of like Mel Gibson's character so far, but I'm still just always thrown off by the fact that it's Mel Gibson. I don't think I'm ever going to get over that. It is a bit of shock to your system, but... Like, it, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, that's still Mel Gibson, so mm-hmm. I'm not... I I find it hard to suspend my disbelief for the character, because I know it's Mel Gibson. For for what it's worth, I sure. just I, I, that's just me. Mm-hmm. It's kind of hard because it feels like we've seen a lot so far, but at the same time, we got it's a lot so to go. early. Yeah, we got it's a lot so to go. early. There's three more hour and a half portions of this thing. I mean, so let's talk about the format for a second. So because I feel like instead of the 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 three part release for all of this. The other two options would have been, you know, full movie length, which we probably would have gotten close to a four hour movie within that. Mm-hmm. And then is, you know, weekly releases and maybe shorter bunches. I, I definitely don't love the idea of viewing this in like 30 minute increments. I, I think that would do a lot to like belabor the story, especially like if you were to, to split this episode that we got. Into and three, one into 30 minute. three 30 minute episodes i don't feel like it would be as interesting i would agree i feel like it'd be as interesting now feature film length i do think that this probably could have been a feature film it was shot like a feature film mm-hmm. looks like a feature film yeah and it obviously it's connected to the john wick universe i this absolutely could have been a feature film I, we'll have to see the rest of it to see you know whether or not which one would be better but even coming from the first episode like i could say that this probably would have been a success in the theaters or i feel like you could have cut it into two parts two parts could have worked three i mean three parts isn't isn't bad it's I basically mean, asking us to watch rage. three movies though essentially is what we're, what we're doing trilogies are all the rage so sure but i also feel like at least in this specific instance you would have had to have wrapped it up obviously so i guess you would have probably had a chance to maybe add 30 minutes to it to kind of actually give it a solid ending mm-hmm. uh, and then let it play into whatever your next movie would have been. Sure. It would have just needed more umph at the end, whereas obviously with this one we know, like, okay, they didn't, they didn't really give it the umph, but we got two more hour and a half episodes of it. To go, yeah. Um, but I will say I think a lot of people are giving it a little bit of flack because they do think it's like kind of all over the place. I see at least as of right now, it's it's all going to come together it is. quite seamlessly. I mean, Chaos is kind of the the brand of John Wick films, but I I, I think it's all going to kind of come together like you said at the end. Mhm. Or maybe not even at the end. I think slowly but surely we'll start seeing the connections to the modern John Wick world that we know. Yeah. 
yeah so i'm I'm actually excited to get through the rest of the parts but it is a lot we've got literally three more hours of, of it yeah. of viewing within the next two weeks uh which is again crazy but hey i'm here for it at the very least give us your thoughts on episode one or part one of the continental uh put it in the prompt below make sure you like share and subscribe and come back next week for a review of part two absolutely if you want some uh reviews of the john wick cinematic universe we do have a review of john wick 4 on the channel so make sure mm. you check that out and then obviously like he said subscribe because we will be reviewing night two and night three of the continental